While donating your public speaking can help build experience, I don't recommend doing that as a general practice. Speaking for free, is it a good idea? If you do feel more comfortable starting out without payment, consider practicing within a group where the focus is on practice, as in a Toastmasters chapter or even starting your own. The beauty of starting your own, you can set up an online practice group. Yes, introducing other speakers is another good way to become comfortable with being the brief center of attention and making notes about what works and what doesn't for yourself. But volunteer or agree to donate your services for free and you may find yourself never considered for the paying gigs. When you have at least three paid gigs under your belt, then you can consider donating your public speaking time, providing it's for a specific, worthy cause. You can also agree to exchange guest appearances on a business peer's webinar, for example, or agree to form part of a panel or teach a workshop in exchange for the right to record, repurpose, and sell your appearance to your own list. Finally, another time you might want to donate your time, if organizers are stuck with a failed presenter and they beg you to bail them out, in which case, make sure you've decided on a policy. Will you ask for payment? easy formula. I'm assuming you'll pay me the same rate as failed presenter. How and when will that payment be made? Is it a non-profit workshop? Simply ask if you don't know. The main thing to remember when deciding whether or not to speak for free is that in some way there has to be reciprocity to it, even if that's just making the right connections, or you will not win respect as a professional, and you won't feel good about being used. Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a non-profit group with chapters, clubs in almost every country. Its mission is to help people improve communication and leadership skills. Public speaking is a major tool they use. Membership is open to anyone over 18 who is interested in improving their communication skills, though they do provide gavel clubs for teenagers in some areas. Each chapter meets anywhere from once a week to once a month, and their philosophy involves learning by doing. There is a manual and specific speaking techniques to learn, and each member is expected after training to present a speech of between five to seven minutes in length at meetings. There is also a leadership manual. Many a glossophobe has got their trembling start at Toastmasters. Everyone I've spoken to who is a member has a quickly conquered their fear of public speaking, and B, loudly sung the organization's praises. Their website allows you to input your city or zip code and instantly find Toastmaster clubs near you. Storytelling schools. Another way to become comfortable with public speaking is to take a storytelling course if one is available in your area. The drawback to this is that most storytelling courses are paid which might not work for you if you are on a shoestring budget. Plus, they are not as widespread as Toastmasters. But storytelling is an essential part of connecting with your audience, no matter how dry or technical your subject. So don't underestimate its value. I've given presentations and told stories publicly, and I can attest that if you can tell a successful story to any age group in any venue, mere presentations pale in comparison. Simply enter the keywords storytelling courses plus your city to find out what's available in your area. Starting your own group. The ideal time to start your own group is after you've taken the storytelling course, if you're going to have to be the leader and organizer. But having a peer-based group in which the only formality is meeting time and place plus length of speech will work even for the most inexperienced would-be presenter, providing you can find others interested in honing their skills too. One tip, however, limit the number of members. Do the math to decide on your ideal number. Are you meeting for an hour? Figure on five minutes for chit-chat while you wait for late arrivals and warm up the room. Be there at least 15 minutes early if you're the leader, so you can also chat with early arrivals. Add another five minutes for issuing a welcome and introducing the day's topics. Figure on another five minutes for wrap-up 
and that's 15 minutes out of your hour, leaving you with 45 minutes. If you divide that segment into five minutes per person, three minutes for a speech, two for feedback or comments, your maximum membership ought to be nine members. How to let people know. If you're planning a location-based group in a physical room, your local newspaper is the place to start. Send out a community press release, as well as a separate short notification for community events. 1. Be sure to date your submissions. 2. Be sure to put your release date on your press release. 3. Remember your press release has to be a newsworthy story. Try to find a single angle most likely to attract the people you want. 4. Make sure you address what, where, why, when, how, much, and who. Your local library or business organizations are also idea places to place announcements. Be sure to state that only the first X will be able to sign up if you are planning on limiting it to a small group. If you are planning an online group, announcing it in your forums, on your Facebook page, via Google+, or other social networks ought to be enough. Send personal invitations to list members or business peers you would like to see in your group. Again, be sure to state that membership will be limited. How to get started as a speaker. And now the segment you've probably been waiting for. How to actually get started. 1. Know your goal. What do you want your public speaking career to do for you? Providing a source of income will take as a given. Do you want to educate potential clients, position yourself as an expert, become famous, change the world, help people achieve personal success in self-actualization, teach them a skill, attract subscribers, appear on national TV? 2. Make sure you specialize in a topic you will never get tired of. One you are passionate about or one that you thoroughly enjoy. 3. Search your local library. Libraries will have listings of meetings and events. Make a note of these organizations and contact them if you think they're the perfect fit for your subject. 4. Ask for referrals. At the end of your presentation, be bold about asking your audience to recommend you to other groups they think would like your services. Point out your business cards on display along with other promotional materials, I hope. Put your referral request right on your business card. 5. Use testimonials. Put them right on your website once you begin to become known. An honest testimonial that's heartfelt can easily land you a paid speaking gig, even if the hirer has never seen you speak. Who can you speak for? This starts with your subject, your specialty. What would you never get tired of talking about? Once you've got your topic, you've got your audience. Look for local organizations that would most benefit from your services and approach them. Have dedicated business cards for the public speaking already made up. Online, it's easy to Google speaker directories and look for candidates that are a good fit. As you can see, there are over 9 million to choose from. Tip. Add your specific niche keyword to narrow down the results. But first, check out Speaker Services and Speaker Zone. The latter is an especially good source of resource tips and materials. And for those who want to speak online, a great way to get started is to check out Luncheonars. Putting on your own events. If you belong to even if you belong to even one or two local niche or business organizations, you can plan your own event, paid or free, and publicize it with ease. Just remember to ask people to pass on the information and have your brochures or business cards ready. If you're worried that people won't pay to come to your event, invite a core group as special guests. Even if no one else shows up, you can practice presenting to this group, ask for testimonials from them, and repurpose your content if you were savvy enough to record the event and or have it transcribed. Reward special guests who attend. Be sure to reward your special guests. The minimum would be a personal thank you note, but you can add gift cards for local restaurants, copies of your books if you have any, or any other bonus you think they would enjoy.
You can also put on an online event and publicize it through your usual channels. Forums you belong to, if allowed, social networks, your blog, your website, sales or squeeze pages, press releases, requests for word-of-mouth recommendations, etc. Your website. Setting up a media page. If you're going to send out press releases and set yourself up as a speaker, you should also have a website focusing strictly on your public speaking career, a media page where people hiring you can pick up professional quality, full-sized photos, bio blurbs, and more. How much should you charge? That's really up to you. The correct answer is really whatever the market will bear. Here are some tips you can put to good use. 1. Check out your competition. What do similarly experienced peers who specialize in public speaking? Look up their rates and set yours accordingly. 2. How much experience have you had? The more public presentations you've given, the more you can usually charge with confidence. 3. How much value are you bringing to the event? If someone else is organizing it, how big a draw will your name be? 4. Factor in your time, event-specific expenses, travel, food, and accommodation costs, and charge at least double for that as your baseline. 5. How much value is the event bringing you? If the possibility of creating new profitable relationships or spreading your reach is particularly alluring, you may feel it's worthwhile to settle for less than your usual fee or even put yourself out of pocket. To put this all into perspectives, $2,500 is the lowest fee large corporations or companies would expect you to work for. If you are invited to speak by a local organization or company, they might feel a couple of hundred is a huge bite out of their budget. If you are invited to speak by a nonprofit organization, they'll most likely expect you to donate your time.